Because we have to observe and do all that he tells us to do. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on you. And shall overtake you. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Let's keep reading. And all these blessings shall come on thee. And overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Are we living on the on the reservation? Are we living on the outskirts or are we in the city right now? We are in the city. The Bible says in verse 3, Blessed shalt thou be in the city. And then he says, And blessed shalt thou be in the field. See, it makes no difference if you live in the city or outside of the city. God is still going to bless your life. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kin and the flocks of thy sheep. For those that have the cattle, you are going to be blessed. God is going to multiply your cattle. Glory to God. Five says, blessed shall be Thy baskets and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. And blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Amen. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. In other words, defeated. The Lord shall cause your enemies to rise, that rise up against you to be defeated before your face. Amen. Because you are blessed. You don't need to fight back. You don't need to retaliate. You don't need to pick up that stick and whack that person across the head with it. Let God fight your battles for you. Many times when Peter and I, we crack up, amen, we're like, man, the pe people don't even realize where we came from. We came from the black. We're lucky that, you know, we're lucky. Thank God that God has changed your heart. Otherwise, we would have been that same old person. Right? I don't know Peter and I, what, eh? What you looking at, eh? Bad dog to be, eh? Come on, eh? Don't you need to have hair like this? <laughs> Back in the days, right? But because you are blessed, the Lord says in verse 7, the Lord shall cause the enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten, in other words, defeated before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. They shall come against you one way and flee before these seven ways because you are blessed. God says, don't worry. I got this. I will fight your battles for you. Yeah. You just forgive them and you just bless them. That's right. Ooh, that's not easy to do. You just forgive them and you bless them and leave the rest up to me. Right. Hallelujah. Because you're blessed. And then verse 8, it says, The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse, in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. In other words, the Lord is going to open up the windows of heaven and he's going to release his blessings upon your life. There's a storehouse full of riches. There's a storehouse full of riches. How many of you are, how many of us are saying, Lord, release your riches unto me today. Open up the windows of heaven. Open up the storehouse, Lord, and release all the riches that are in store for my life. 
Some of us are not receiving that because we're not asking. And then it says, Glory to God. Verse 9, it says, The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. See, we're not, we're not of this world no more, church. The Lord says, I'm going to save me a special people unto myself. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. We are called to be set apart. We shouldn't be having a conversation like the world anymore. We shouldn't be joking and cussing and talking like the world no more. We are changed people. We are the people of God. We are holy people. Glory to God. So your lifestyle should be different. Right? People ought to look, look at you and I like, wow, this guy's different. She's different. Well, yeah, because the Lord, I got Jesus in my heart. I'm no longer that old person. What's that, man? Why are you mad at me, man? We're not that people anymore. Amen? Amen. We're changed. Verse 10, it says, and all, and all people of the earth shall what? Shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. Are you called by the name of the Lord this morning? Are people watching you? You are called by the name of the Lord this morning. Why is that person different? I like the way that person walks. I like the way that person talks. Man, that person used to be full of anger. Now they have so much love in their heart. That person used to cuss a lot. Now they stop cussing. Now they're all talking about positive. Always, you know, always good conversation. No more violence, but there's peace in that person. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of thee. Have you, have you noticed you'll be walking, you'll be shopping at the Gallup Fleet Market? You'll be looking around, checking out the jewelers. Or you'll be, working, you'll be walking around Walmart and then all of a sudden somebody recognizes you. Someone that you, they used to come and, and they come and visit you and, or, or the church and all of a sudden they see you. The moment they see you, they're like, oh, go this way. They're afraid of you. They're afraid of you because you're different. They're afraid of you because they see Jesus in you. They're afraid of you because you're no, no longer that old person. You're a new creation in Christ. You're a new, you're a, a new creation in Christ, Lord of God. You live a life that, that, that pleases the Lord. And maybe their lifestyle has not been completely changed, but they, they, when they see you, they walk away. They're afraid of you. Just recently, there was, a, there was two individuals that used to come to the church back at the first church, and, I'm, and I see them at the mall, Right? And, 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 and I went straight up to them and I said, hey, how you doing? Long time no see. You know, they looked at me like this. And like, oh. I'm not God. It's okay. It's only me, Marvin. <laughs> but there are some people, when they see you, they will turn around, they will flee, they will run, they will run on the second aisle. Amen? You're like, hi, oh, where did you go? I thought you saw sister so-and-so. Now, now they just gone. This is what happens when the blessings of the Lord overshadows you. God has your back. Come on, tell your neighbors that God has a God has your back. Amen. He will take care of you. He will bless you wherever you go. In verse 11, it says, And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of the body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. His good treasure. Storehouse. There's a storehouse. How many of you want, how many of you want the Lord's good treasures in his storehouse? Amen. 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 The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season. And to bless all the work of thy hand. 
and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not uh, borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. In other words, you're going to be a leader and not a follower. Right. Amen. All of us here today, the Lord is calling you to be a leader and not a follower. Glory to God. To bless all the works of thy hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I commanded, command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. As a child of God, do not follow and serve other gods. God should be our number one, right? He should be number one every day of our lives. God is a great father. We have an awesome heavenly father that loves you and I, that he wants to bless you and I, that he wants us to live a life of abundance. Amen. See, understand that Deuteronomy 28, you know, Moses, he continued to admonish him, or he, he continued to speak to the Israelites. Admonish, I looked it up this morning, I said, what does admonishing mean? It means to warn or reprimand someone firmly. Warn or reprimand someone firmly. Moses, when he was speaking to the children of Israel, he says, he says, he was warning them, and he says, listen carefully to the voice of God. And in doing this, they will be high above all the nations of the earth. How many know the Lord wants us to listen to him? Amen. He's warning us this morning. You and I have a choice. Do you want to live a life of blessing? Or do you want to live a life of curses? Well, what's curses? Curses is everything opposite with what we just read. Amen. But worse. But worse. Glory to God. If we don't, if we choose not to obey the voice of God or his commands, curses are going to follow you and I until we are destroyed. That's what the Bible says. I mean, it's true, y'all. The Bible talks about the blessings from verses 1 through 12 to 14. But guess what? If you want to read on about curses, look at verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curse shall thou be in the city and curse shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall thou be thy baskets and thy store. Cursed shall thou be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, kin, and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thy hand unto for you to do until thou be what? destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings whereby thou hast forsaken me church you don't want to go to this you don't want to go this direction the blessings of the Lord talks about that in verses 12 and 14 I'm not going to read the whole 68 all the way up to 68 because we'll be here all day. But it's your job. How bad do you want to know it? How bad do you how bad do you want to read what God has to say? I mean, it gets so bad. Right? 
verses talks about more, it's more exaggerating and it's more harsh. I don't think you and I want to go through that. Right? If you continue to read all the way up to 60, 68, it talks about madness will come over those people that say no to Jesus, no to God the Father. Blindness will come upon them. Oppression from the very same mixed multitude who came out of Egypt with them are going to become spiritually blind and be oppressed. Those that are married, their masters are going to be sharing their wives with their husbands. Those that have sons and daughters will be given to another people as captives, as slaves, to serve other gods. God's going to say, okay, you don't want to serve me? Go ahead and serve the wood, the stone. Things like this that, that let me ask you a question. When someone prays to a stone or a rock, do they talk back? No. no. There is no other God, church. Amen. There's only one God. Glory to God. The Bible says in verse, if you continue to read on to 68, it says there's going to be a, the curse is going to be great in number. Their land will be destroyed by their enemies. They won't lend to any nations. They will only borrow. They will have domestic problems. Even the nicest man or the nicest uh, man or woman, they're not going to be nice at all. They're going to be so mean. The Lord says, as far as the curse is coming upon a people, those that say no to me, I will place sickness and disease upon them. And they will scatter from all over the earth by their enemies. There will be no rest. There will be no peace until they're destroyed. The men and women that have that had kids in those days would eat up their own kids. They could care less about their kids. That's how cruel they were. That's how bad the curses came upon the people, those that rejected God the Father. They were put in slave camps. They were in bondage. They were in captivity. No one wanted to buy them as slaves. I mean, I'm glad that we don't have to get to this point, church. All of us have a choice to make. We don't have to go this route. Now you tell me which side to, would you rather be on? Would you rather be on a side where, Lord, I will do everything you tell me to do. I will follow you. I will love you. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Or if we say, no, Lord, I'm not ready. I want to do my own thing. I still want to go party. I still want to sleep around. I still want to steal. I still want to fight and do all these things. Well, guess what? Curses are going to follow you all the days of your life until you're destroyed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So the message in Deuteronomy is to what? Listen to God. Listen to God. And we have to what? Obey him. And he says for us to love him with all of our hearts. That's what the book of Deuteronomy is telling us. It's a message for us to listen to God. To obey him. And to love him with all of our heart, our soul, and our strength. Can we do that, church? Amen. No, say no, because yes, it's possible. My Bible says in Philippians 4, 13, that I can do all things through Christ, who gives me strength. Right? Amen. Jesus was the one, he was the one that taught us that the greatest command is for us to love the Lord with all of our hearts soul and strength of mind. Right? Everywhere we go, we should seek to love God. Everywhere we go, even in our workplace, in our home. Everywhere we go, we ought to seek to love God. And when we do this, our attitude pushes us towards worship, prayer, 
Bible reading, and to establish relationships. People are looking at you. People desire what you have. Can I get a witness today that people are looking at your life and they want what you have? Amen. They want that peace. They want that joy. They want that blessing upon your life. But guess what? It doesn't come for free. It takes sacrifice. It takes discipline. It takes saying, Lord, I'm going to worship you. I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to open up the word of God. I'm not just going to leave my Bible sitting on the shelf and let it collect dust. Amen. Worship is not easy because it takes work. Amen? Amen? It's not easy to be in your home and say, okay, I'm tired. I, Lord, I'm going to get on my knees and pray before I go to bed. Or I'm going to read a chapter before I go to bed tonight, Lord. It's not easy, right? Especially when your body is tired. Amen. It's not easy to say, Lord, I'm going to worship you for 15 minutes before I go to bed. It takes discipline. It takes sacrifice. God knows your heart. Tell your neighbor, say, God knows your gene. Gene means heart. God knows your heart. He knows that when you are faithful, He knows that when, when you take the time to read and talk to Him and love on Him, He wants to bless your life. Do you have to do it uh, perfectly? No. No, you don't have to do it perfectly. You don't have to say, well, pastor, i got to come in to two and a half hours. That's two, that's, two, uh, uh, you know, 10% out of my day. You do what you can, and God will still appreciate that. He'll love you on that. Amen? Does Deuteronomy 20 still apply to you and I today? Yes, yes it does. <laughs> it's still a life and death book for Christians like you and I today, right? It urges us to choose genuine life. God wants to impart into our lives through his word. Can sin offer this type of, this type of lifestyle, this type of lifestyle to us? No. no. Sin cannot bring blessings onto our lives. It is only found in Jesus Christ alone. Jesus is life, right? Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I thank the Lord for Deuteronomy that we're able to read the consequences of being disobedient and the blessings of being obedient. I would encourage you, church, to read. Read this chapter again. Read it in a version where you can understand. You are blessed. We are the seed of Abraham, right? I thank the Lord for my new life. My wife and I, I remember when I was out in the world, we used to live paycheck to paycheck. We had to budget. How many of you know that if you want nice things, you gotta budget? You can't just spend money that you don't have. We had to budget. Sometimes we tell Solomon, Solomon says, I want this, I want that. Well, bills come first. You want a roof over your head, we gotta pay the house bill. You wanna get places, we gotta pay the car bill. You want food in the house, then we're gonna we're gonna put money aside for food. So my wife and I we used to live paycheck to paycheck. But ever since the Lord called me to be a pastor, and we started the ministry eleven years ago, twelve years ago. Ever since we've been doing the will the will of God and just being obedient, hearkening unto His voice, we have seen God's blessing overtake us. Now we're like, you know what? Let's go eat somewhere. Let's go get ourselves a nice ribeye steak. Mm. Let's go shop for somebody. Let's be a blessing to somebody. Praise the Lord. I mean, don't, you know, it's not like I got a million dollars. I claim it though, right? I claim it. 
But my wife and I, we don't have to say, how much do we have in our account? Can, can we afford this or not? Now we are blessed. Now we can, now we don't have to worry about the, the gas prices. How many of you were kind of paranoid when everything went up? The food went up, the gas prices went up, right? Everything went up, right? I got a little worried. I want to be honest, right? I said, like, oh no. Prices went up, gases went up. What are we going to do? But then the Lord reminded me, as long as you hearken unto my voice, as long as you do what I tell you to do and you obey them, I will bless your life. I will bless your life. I will release the storehouses. I will release the riches upon your life. Wherever you go, whether you're in town or out of town, wherever you go, God says, I will bless your life. The blessings, my blessings, his blessings will overshadow. It will, it will chase you down. Don't worry what the world is happening. What's, what's going on around the world? As long as you put Christ first, God will take care of you. He will protect you and he will provide for you. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Come on, tell your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. Amen. Just step out by faith. Step out by faith and let's trust God. You know, it, it, it's just the world is getting more crazier and crazier, right? You watch the news. Things are just going crazier. Praise the Lord, but don't fear. God is with us. He's with you. He's with me. As long as we keep doing what he tells us to do, as long as you're in prayer, as long as you're in the word, as long as we obey him, he will bless your life. Amen. He will bless your life. But if you say no to all of this, uh oh. Well, you just read on to Deuteronomy chapter 15 all the way through 68 and you watch what God will do upon that person. Like I said many times, when I was out in the world, when I wasn't following Jesus, when I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do, when I was out in the world, I've lost everything. I, my, my vehicle was repoed. My apartment that I was in, gone. The good paying job that I was working on, gone. My finances that I have saved up were all gone. Everything was gone. But when the Lord spoke to me in that jailhouse, being in jail for 97 days, a small group of men would, would hang on on one side of the area